Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mark here, and I wanted to share something with you. I'm working on my Mugen, kind of wrapping up some loose ends. Uh, I'm going to show you something real quick. Hang on. I was using a Futaba 4 PLS um, for the past two years. Started out my first year at a shitty radio. Um, my second year at a Spectrum and made the mistake like a lot of guys make and think they can get a decent radio for a hundred bucks and I did that and I regretted it. After the year I upgraded to a Futaba 4 PLS. That would have been my, I believe like my, probably after about a year and a half, two years of racing. And I was mind blown at how much faster and how much better everything was so if you're ever in the market and you're thinking about spending a hundred bucks don't do it just spend 200 bucks get yourself a 4 plx or a 4 pls i'm sorry or a uh 4 pk or you know one of the better radios or the MT, if you want to go a little ex bit expensive you know you can get the mt44 anyway it's my fourth year racing, and I finally pulled the trigger. I got an M12, the, I think it was 369 or 359 with the A-Main uh, $30 off coupon code. Anyway, I had to sell all my old stuff, all my Futaba stuff, and I, I got a new motor coming for this Mugen, and I'm in the process of getting all this stuff ready for this upcoming outdoor season. Well... Let's, let me get to the point here. I am installing my new Sanwa receivers. So I got my, I got my new, um, this is an antenna uh, the one that comes with it. I believe it's like a 482 or something like that. Yeah, 482. It's the good $100 uh, re receiver that comes with the radio. Anyway, something that, I like to do instead of I've tried the double-sided tape I've tried uh, the velcro I've tried the fancy different types of velcro I've tried double double-sided tape dust likes to work its way under the double-sided tape and your receivers will come loose and especially your ESC's will come loose and you can use that expensive zeal, that blue f gel shit, <laughs> whatever you, whatever you like. Anyway, I use E6000. I use E6000 for a lot of things. Anyway, I use it to mount my ESCs, and I put my ESC on a foam base. You can see under it there. I get quarter inch foam. It's neoprene foam from eBay. 12 by 12 inch by 12 inch square. You can buy for like eight bucks. And I cut it out and then I use the E6000 to glue my ESCs down. And same with this receiver here. You use a little bit of E6000 and you put it on the receiver. And it's not glue, so it's not a permanent bond. It's a liquid rubber, so you can peel it off and you can scrape it off and it comes off. But once you do that, then you got to let it set up. I mean, you can't use it an hour later. You have to let it set up for 10 hours, 8 hours or something, you know, but overnight, whatever. You're, you know your receiver isn't going to go anywhere. And same with the ESC. You don't have to worry about your ESC coming loose and flopping around and whatever the case may be. So you can use Shugu or E6000 to fasten your ESC and receiver down. Now, this Mugen box is fairly roomy. And in this Mugen box, I have the receiver, I have a glitch buster, and I have my, my, tra my, uh, my transponder. So all three of those can go in your receiver box. It keeps everything in there and out of the way. It keeps it protected from dust. And, you know, it's just a good spot to put everything. But you don't want everything moving around in your receiver box. You know, 
so this is something that I've been doing basically since day one, but I don't, I've never seen anybody else do it. This is an old open cell foam from a monster truck from back in the day from a T-Max or something stupid, whatever. Cut up the foam into little usable chunks. And what you do is inside your receiver box, you pack the foam in there to take up space. And what it does is it holds everything in place and keeps stuff from moving around and wiggling around. And then what you do before you put the lid on, you cut one, this one needs cut down, you cut one and put one on top like this. And you sandwich everything together and what that foam does is it holds all your wires in place, keeps everything in there. And it also kind of keeps dust, a little bit of dust that gets in there. It'll kind of keep dust out too. So just something I've been doing. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but it's something that I do and it works well. And I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, that and the gluing down your electronics. Um, one other cool little thing that I use this foam for. Let me show you real quick. Inside of here, in your outdrives, where your drive shafts slide forward and back in some vehicles. This Mugen doesn't do that because it's, the drive shafts are actually fastened to the pinion. But the uh, models like my SCTE, my 3.0 SCTE, the drive shafts float back and forth. And what you can do is you can take the foam and you can cut a little ball of it and you can put it inside of here, inside of the outdrive. And what that does is it lets your drive shaft float around in there, but it keeps the drive shaft from vibrating around as much and moving around as much, but it's still, you know, it's still in there. It's soft. It gives a cushion. You could put a little ball of foam in there. Works really good on the B64Ds. Because the B64D drive shafts like to pull that that E clip out. They like to grab that E clip and pull it pull it out. And if you put the little piece of foam in there in the out drive on the center diff, it'll keep that from happening. But just a couple uh, little tips, little things that I do, and you know, something I'd like I wanted to share. But um, I got to go to work in the morning. And I'm going to hit the hay. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.